Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So it's been a while since I tested Autopilot version 1.0 and uh, I was wondering it used to be better than Autopilot 2.0 because it was more short-footed, it had less, less capabilities but it was more short-footed and now I managed to borrow a uh, Model S with Autopilot 1.0 from uh, Jo Verspeet, so thank you Jo for that. Also guys, if you are ordering a Tesla, please use his referral code this time uh, as a way to say thank you for letting me borrow his car. Now his car is also on update 2020.20.1 20 and uh, yeah, let's see how Autopilot 1 behaves on my usual test circuit. Now, as usual, first up, we have the hill crest. Um, but I'm kind of curious to see what it will do at the top here, because I do see the lane lines squiggling a little bit with uh, the curvature of the road. But I'm most interested in actually the bottom part where uh, my car goes a little bit to the left, uh, hunting for the middle of the road, but let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. Here at the top, it was a little bit different but arrow straight at the bottom. Oh, a little bit to the right now, just a little bit. So a hill means a curvature in the road. So it's looking at a 3D environment and making it a 2D rendering, which an image basically is. And there it still has some problems. I still remember that from my old P85D, but uh, I thought that would have been gone. So I expect the same here at the bottom. Ah, here it's okay here it's okay but um, yeah so that was uh, still going to the sides based on the curvature the basically the the, the z-axis of the curvature uh, of the road interesting so last September I believe it was that uh, Tesla sent a message to autopilot one owners that their car would adhere to the UN ECE regulations as well so it is also limited by the uh, cornering forces so I'm hoping it will break before the turn as well and otherwise hopefully we can see what it will do it's not breaking it's not breaking whoa whoa okay it's keeping it back in check but that would have been a head-on collision if there was a car coming from the other side this is better yeah, this is keeping more in the center than Autopilot 2, but that first turn, no way. Also here it's more in the center, it's not so much going to the outside of the lane. It is still doing it a little bit, but not as much as Autopilot 2. But my speed is matched, of course, to the person in front of me, so that could be more or less the same. But that first part of the turn, because it's not braking, it goes over that... Uh, lane marking and into the oncoming traffic basically so that's definitely not good so we don't have navigate on autopilot on this car because it's an ap1 car but i can test how it reacts to that truck in that uh, first lane while i'm in the third lane and let's see if i want to move over i need to lock the blinker here in this case so next to the truck locking the blinker it's going it's going yep that seems to be a lot better so that confirms to me a little bit that uh, the side cameras are the ones that are acting up here which is kind of logical but uh, yeah it, it only has the ultrasonics to work with so that is definitely uh, an advantage of having ap1 also, um, when doing the lane change, uh, the advantage of having AP1 is the ultrasonics can only reach about five meters. So the UNEC regulation has this formula where it cannot do a lane change unless you have a gap of, let's say, 30 meters at uh, 120 kilometers an hour. And that is something that this car cannot do 
because it doesn't have the cameras. Um, so whenever I want to do a lane change, the gap needs to be only just a fraction of that. It needs to be a lot smaller than uh, with AP1. Uh, sorry, with AP2. So right now I am in an unexpected traffic jam. Uh, I just saw that the road up ahead has been closed off completely. Uh, not sure how far I can still get, but what I do notice is that the car at these slow speeds is ping-ponging between the lane markings. So you saw me at the right lane marker and now it's moving to the left one and then it will adjust again uh, for going to the right one. So yeah, it's not as rock solid as I remember it was because Autopilot 1.0 in my memory was really holding the center of the lane. Sometimes a little bit too much making for jerky movements, but uh, it was really good at that. And right now, yeah, now it's switched to following the car in front of me, but uh, it was ping-ponging between the lane markings at low speeds. Now let's see if we can also get the timeout for the lane change activated here. So if it isn't activated or the lane change hasn't started within five seconds, then it will uh, deactivate normally or time out. So here I can't go. So let's see what it does. Oh, no, it's going. Wow. And auto lane change canceled. Okay. But it was going towards that truck. Wow. That was not supposed to happen. Uh, really strange because next to the truck I would expect the, that the uh, ultrasonics would uh, kick in and uh, yeah they would prevent the collision but it didn't collide it went to the truck and then it moved away again all by itself but it was a little bit too close for comfort now we do know that autopilot one cars they read the speed signs or the speed limit signs. So here with the 50 kilometers an hour, let's see if it adjusts correctly as well then. Yep, it says 50. That's, that's a little bit sooner than what my car does. My car does it about 20 meters behind the sign, but autopilot speed is not adjusted. It still says it can do 70. So you would get a ticket here if you uh, continued on autopilot. Now let's see behind the traffic light, um, I can do 70 kilometers an hour again, uh, but that's the default speed in uh, Flanders, Belgium. And that means that there is no sign there. Let me see if it will go back up to 70 kilometers an hour. No, it is losing lane lines here as well. It's not as good as Autopilot 2 in reading the lane lines at that point. And now it's going back up to 70 kilometers an hour. So it does adjust, but it takes a bit longer than with Autopilot 2.0. And up ahead, we have the lane shift. I'm really curious to see what it will do here because it's a very abrupt shift. And I remember my Autopilot 1 car being able to uh, handle that. Uh, let's see if we can uh, nope it's a red light i'll uh, try to leave some room to uh, make sure i can accelerate no car behind me at the moment so i'm leaving plenty of room yeah i'm going to wait as long as possible to actually uh, start here okay there's a truck coming behind me Activating autopilot, accelerating up to 70 kilometers an hour. Now let's see what it does. This car coming from the other side. Whoa! <laughs> Holy f Wow. Um, that would have gone all the way off the road. I really had to intervene there and even then I felt the car sliding a little bit. So, uh, yeah, if you have Autopilot 1, definitely don't use it in that situation. Wow. 
All right, I'm also curious to see what it will do here. Will it be able to activate autopilot? Seize the lines. Yes, I can activate autopilot. Thinks I can do 30. It's hunting for the middle of the road right now. Let's see if I can up it. Nope, it still thinks I can only do 30. Whoa, it's searching for the left side. Wow, it stays in the middle of the road, more on the left side. It found the lane marking on the left side, so now it's completely driving on the opposite side of the road. Um, yeah, I can't allow it to do that any further, so that's uh, definitely not a good point as well. And uh, Autopilot 2.0 does a much better job there. Here also with Autopilot 2.0 you have a lane indication on your dash. With 1.0 you don't get that uh, apparently. So again, another point for Autopilot 2. And 3 of course. Alright, time to conclude this video. And what do I think about Autopilot 1 at the moment? I distinctly remember autopilot being a lot better than what I've seen today. So during the different updates that were received on the autopilot one cars, it has regressed quite a bit. Like the uh, the S curve, of course, uh, there the regulations play a big part. And apparently autopilot one cannot recognize the turn before it actually happens. So that is why it doesn't slow down. Autopilot 2 does a better job there at the moment. Um, the hill crest, uh, if you look closely at the dashboard then you will actually see the line going left right uh, or thinking it's a turn while it's still straight on if you come to the top or the bottom of that hill. So that is something that I have noticed on my own car, my older car, my AP1 P85D. But uh, yeah, with Autopilot 2, that does not happen. So the road stays straight. It only hunts for a bigger road section at the bottom of that hill crest. Um, now we also did uh, a test early on with Autopilot 1 where I taped off the ultrasonics to see whether or not it would still do the lane change. So uh, that was a near collision that we created, me and a friend of mine. Uh, back in the days um, so yeah that those ultrasonics still don't work exactly the way I'm hoping they would work because if I started the uh, lane change next to the truck then it actually started the lane change and only then detected like whoa I shouldn't be doing this it did correct all by itself so that's good but uh, unfortunately it did initiate that lane change uh, as well now as for that uh, lane shift at the end uh, I mean yeah I almost needed a new pair of pants there uh, it was really scary the way it actually jerked into that turn and then didn't have time to correct itself I also remember uh, that it actually worked uh, on that lane shift with my old car. So again, that is a big regression. I assume also because of those lateral g-forces that are limited, it can't make that turn anymore. So again, more examples of how the UNECU regulations make autopilot a lot more dangerous than it actually is. The car is a lot more capable than what it is allowed to do. So yeah, I'm still trying to fight for the fact that the regulations need to follow the technology and not the other way around. Um, yeah, and finally, of course, where the lane markings disappear, um, that, yeah, it, it started hunting for the left side of the road because of those parking indicators. That's where it discovered, like, okay, this seems like a lane line. I'm going to follow that on the left side. Um, it has no concept of the width of the road or where it needs to be when there are no lane markings. So Autopilot 2.0 is definitely better there. So for me, Autopilot 1 is still really good when it concerns highway driving and relaxed driving 
in between the lines uh, and just following the road autopilot one is great but I would advise against using it outside of the highway because yeah I remember it a lot better but right now I don't trust it at all to drive on local roads so there you have it I hope you found this an interesting video and if you did give it a thumbs up and as usual hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos and for now thanks for watching see you guys next time bye bye